Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to be in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. We were in that verses a couple weeks ago, but God spoke to me a little bit different this week about the same scripture, so we're going to head right back to it. Book of Hebrews, chapter 11, first three verses. Book of Hebrews, chapter 11, first three verses. If you're there, say amen. Amen. All right, here, if you uh, give, we'll catch up. All right, let's see what God's word has to say this morning. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. You know, I love God's Word. You can read a Scripture and it speaks to you differently. It depends where you're at. Now, the base of a Scripture doesn't change. It's the same Scripture. But I love how God can take you down different paths. and he, you know, he meets us where we're at. I really love that. Now, as we've been looking at faith, we're in week four of the sermon series, Faith That's Real. Now, the biblical definition of faith is given to us right off the bat in verse 1. You know, it says the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I, out of curiosity at times, I, I like to look at the world definition of things. I'm big on that. I like to look at the definition. We have, we have so much slang in our culture that a lot of times you lose, lose the true meaning of words. But we, so we got the biblical definition. Now, I'll look, compare the, the world's definition of, uh, of faith. It says this. The world's definition says complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Now, that doesn't sound too bad. I mean, what's wrong with that, Pastor? You see, but there's a, there's a difference between a biblical definition and the world's definition. Even though that sounds pretty close, and it doesn't sound like it's no big deal, it, when, you, when you read what it says, the, the world's definition says, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Well, that could be anything. That, could be any, that doesn't have anything to do with God. He may or may not. It could be anything. Your, their confidence can be placed in something or someone so far, so, so, so outlandish, who knows what it might be. So there is actually a big difference. When something sounds pretty good, it might not be. See, they're placing their trust in things of this world. These things of this world are going to leave you empty. I know, I've tried them. Boy, and they left me empty. They're going to, that's what's going to happen. When you place your trust in anything besides God. You know, if you can place your trust in a person, that person may not intend to, but sooner or later, that person is going to let you down. Why? Because they're human. It's just going to happen. They may not mean to. It's just going to happen. The only person who's not ever going to leave you nor forsake you is God. A Christian knows where their help comes from, but trusting in Him is much different. (laughs) Trusting in anything else but God is not going to get you where you want to be in the end. It's going to leave you where you don't want to be. You've got to trust in God and not what the world says. Oh, you're just chasing all these silly things. Well, it's not silly. When I stand before a holy God one day, it's not going to be so silly. Now, when I think about faith, as we've been walking through it, there's a question that always rises. It's good to ask questions. You see, when when I first got saved years ago, I was taught you should never question anything. I think that is wrong. I think you should question everything. Now, when you go to God and question something, I'm not talking about in a defiant, arrogant way. That's not what I'm saying. I wouldn't do that. I I really wouldn't do that. I I, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. I'm not talking about that. But see, God knows we don't understand everything on this side of eternity. I I believe if you go to him and you ask him, and, 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 you know, truly wanting to know the answer, and you're talking to him, I believe he doesn't mind us asking questions. I really don't. The question that arose for me when I looked at what does faith look like to you? You say, well, that's pretty simple. Now, i got the biblical definition here. That's pretty simple. But it may surprise you that the answers that you get from people. Sometimes when you ask very simple questions, if you were just take a random survey, even among believers, you're going to get a variety of answers. Now, the base might be the same, but it's going to, it's going to vary a lot. Why is that? Because God speaks to each one of us differently. I really believe that. I think it's very wrong for many Christians because it's been dumped on me in the past that if I think this way, everybody else must think this way. Or if they don't think the way I do, something is wrong. 
Well, I know that God speaks to each one of us differently. The responses you get sometimes may surprise you when you ask people questions. I'm telling you, we years ago we used to go down to the boardwalk and we would witness and do things like that. And some of the responses that you would get, it was, it just, it was just out there. Now, I think part of the reason God led me back right back to Hebrews chapter 11 again is I was looking at some of the people in there. You know, they're mentioning, you know, we know Hebrews 11, they call it the faith chapter, the, you know. But some of their lives, if you would really look at these people, I mean, they're well known, but some of their lives, it would really surprise you what they had going on and things that they had done in their life in the past. All right, let's, let's just, we'll walk through a few of them real quickly here. I don't want to spend a lot of time there. All right, we got Noah, Sarah, Rahab, Joseph, and Moses. Just, and there's others, obviously. Now, we know they all made a difference in this world. Okay, so what else did they have in common? Okay, now we know there's faith there. But, you know, some of the things, you, some, some people try to label them as they might have faith uh, while they're in there, I should say, while they're together. Were they a perfect people? Absolutely not. There is no such thing. No such thing. We know they all weren't men. We all, we all know they all weren't women. There's a variety there. And it, we all know they weren't a certain age. There's a lot of different age groups there. What else could it possibly be? You know, when I looked at that group, maybe it was their good moral conduct. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Look at that group. Look at that group. If you know, look at their history. What, what you got going on there? There was some of the ones I just listed. There was murderers, there was drunks, and there was prostitutes in the Hall of Faith. So what you say the good moral conduct probably wasn't it. That's probably not why they're listed together. When I look at this group, if you were to really look at them, they were actually kind of messed up. You know, they did great things for God, but you know what? If, if you go through a lot of the people in the Bible, we know for what they did for God, but if you look at their life, there was some messed up stuff there. There was stuff, you would say, how in the world did God ever use someone like that? I don't know, but I thank God that he did. I thank God that he uses messed up people. Because I don't care how holy and how mature you are, there are some things in your past that were probably kind of messed up. You know, things you're not really proud of. So the one thing that they really, really had in common and why they got there, it's not because they were perfect people. It wasn't because they wasn't messed up. It's because they had faith in something bigger than them. Praise God for that. There's something bigger than me. I would hate to think it was me and that was it. I, faith in me? There's a lot of people, you know, they don't have faith in God. They don't have faith in this. They have faith in their self and their own abilities. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 tells us we are to live by faith, not by sight. You say, well, why can't I go by sight? You know, I can see that. I know that's real. Because you can't believe half of what you see. Things are not always as they appear. Now, everywhere I go today, and I know down the road I live on, they don't do it so much in my yard, but there's, there's a field right beside my house that has a ditch right there along the road. They tend to want to throw their trash out there all the time. That's yeah, everywhere nowadays. Well, I get, I get enough, if it gets too much out there, I'll walk down there and I pick it up and clean it up. And I can remember one time I walked down and, and I was picking up, it seemed to be a lot of fast food bags, Cigarette boxes and liquor bottles. That's what's on mine anyway. And I remember I walked down, it's probably 100 yards or so from my house, and I'm walking back. I got a liquor bottle in one hand, <laughs> and I got a 40 in the other. Right? I'm walking back to my house, and I'm just walking up there, not thinking I'm cleaning up trash. And I'm walking, well, there's cars coming by down the road. I don't know if I know these people or not. I don't even have no idea who they are. They got their windows up. But I'm walking back up, and I'm just not thinking, like, you know, I wonder if what they're thinking. You know, these people don't know who I am. I've got a liquor bottle in one hand and a 40 in another one, right? I'm going up there. See, things are not always as they appear. Now, you know, what would, you know, you say, well, if he's got an empty liquor bottle and a 40 in his hand, he must have drank them. But he's walking kind of straight to drink all that. See, things are not always as they appear. So you can't live by sight. Because you can't believe a half of what you see. Now, I've been accused of a lot of things in life, and some of them I may have done. But I didn't do them all. 
I remember back in the day, me, me and some of the guys I used to run around with, that all these things were, we were accused of. And well, you know what? That particular night, I wasn't even there. But I was associated with these guys, so I got accused of it too. I said, no, not that night. I was home that night. I wasn't there. I don't know what they did, but I wasn't in on this one. See, sometimes you can't believe everything you hear, and you can't believe everything you see. The thing about it is, we all, we, don't, we just like to live predictable lives. We do the same thing. We are creatures of habit. We do the same thing. When you get up in the morning, whatever it is that you do, you do the same thing over and over again. It makes us, you know, it's very predictable. We feel safe that way. We know it. if I do this, I get this result. If I do that, I get this result. I like that, right? So I know what's going to happen. It makes me feel like I'm in control. Well, maybe not so much. I'm not as in control as much as I may think. When I live a predictable life, it makes me feel safe and it's known to me. And that sense of control we just want, it gives us that. When we can do the same things over, I already know what's going to happen. But when you live such a life, when you do the same thing, you say, well, I know the outcome. But it's, it leaves us on a plateau. See, when you live on a plateau, you know what? It doesn't take much effort to get there. It means you've been there probably there before. You know what? If I do this, it's going to bring me right here. And I'm good here. I feel whatever this plateau is you're in your, in your life, you say, I'm good right here. So that, I'm just going to put this amount of effort into it. It might have took me a lot of effort years ago to get there, but now I don't have to do much of anything to get there now. I'm safe. I'm comfortable. I've been there so many times. But the thing about plateaus is, that's where dreams go to die. Because you're not putting any effort in anything anymore. You're just doing what you already know. Your dreams don't live on a plateau. For every ten dreamers, only one will step out in faith. Only one. You see, without faith, dreams are going to remain just that. Nothing ever is going to happen because you're not doing anything different. I'm assuring you to see dreams come, come to pass... It's gonna, you're going to have to be stretched some. And I don't like being stretched, especially at my age. I don't like being stressed at all anymore. I like to have answers. I like to already know what's going to happen. I like to be predictable. I like, if I do this, God, I, I want this to happen, right? Is, this, is that the deal we got? If I do this in life, I expect this result. And there's a problem. Well, that's the same thing I've always done. How come I'm not getting the same result anymore? We want answers and we want clarity in life. We already know what's going to happen. What I really find is when we're looking for answers and we're looking for clarity is, I'm looking for a guarantee. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a guarantee. God, this is the deal. Look, if I do this, I want this result. Or if I do this, I know this is going to happen. If I do this at the workplace, I know I expect this result. In other words, I'm looking for a guarantee. Well, in this life, there ain't no guarantees. The only the guarantee you're going to get is from God. When you get saved, He is never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. And if you're saved, one day when you cross over to the other side, you're going to make your home into heaven. You know what? There's a few things God does promise us in the Bible. But I'm telling you, if you're counting on the things in this world or someone else to give you a guarantee, they can leave you high and dry. I don't care what they say. It's going to leave you high and dry. There's things that I find in my life. And we all, we all do it at times. The most adventurous of us have it, do it at times. We are scared of failure. We're scared that we're going to put all this time and effort into something and nothing's going to come of it. You know what? If I fail, what are they going to say about me? Boy, they're going to, they're, boy, they're going to have a field day with me. You would hate to think what they're saying about you anyway. Yeah. They're going to have a field day with you anyway, whether you're doing anything or not. You know, I want to do, now, at the end of my life, I would rather deal with a few failures than a mountain of regret. Because at the end, you're never going to know whether you could have done it or not because you were so scared to fail. I'd much rather deal with a few failures. Some of the most successful people in this world, we see, all we see is their success. We don't realize how many times they have failed over and over again until they finally got it right. And how many people do I see, they go out and say, well, I'm going to try. And as soon as they put any kind of effort into it and it don't go their way, well, I tried. 
Just because, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, God teaches us lessons through a lot of things. You can learn a lot through your failures. I've learned a lot through mine. I know there's a lot of things I don't want to do again. A lot of things that caused me a lot of hurt and a lot of pain. And it was my own stupidity. My faith must be stronger than my doubt. Doubts are going to creep in. The strongest of us, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. Why are you doing that? Nobody cares about you. Why are you even doing that? Doubt is going to creep into the best of us. Doubt will leave you running for cover. But your faith is going to help you realize you are covered. God has been with you from the very beginning. He never left you nor forsake you one time. He has been there, but that doubt creeps in. Nobody cares about you. Why are you even doing this? You're not making any difference at all. I'm telling you, we have to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. If all you ever do every day is the same thing, the same routine, and we're creatures of habit, we just do. How are we trying to stretch ourselves so we see our dreams come to pass? How are we trying to make a difference in this world? I'm not so sure. It's tough. Because when you see somebody else stepping out, what's the first thing a lot of people do? Why in the world are they doing that? I remember when I first started preaching, there were some people like, why in the world is he doing that? I just tell you this, when I first started preaching, there were some very gracious people. They were very patient and long-suffering. <laughs> patient and long-suffering. <laughs> they were gracious. I'm going to look into the book of Genesis just for a minute, chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. I'm not going to read it to you. I'm going to give you the verses for reference. Book of Genesis, chapter 12, 1 to 4. It's a very familiar portion of Scripture. At this point in the, in the scripture, God is speaking to Abram. God tells him to go to a land that he will show him. God will show him the land, but he's got to go there. Sounds like no big deal, right? Think about this. Abram didn't even know where he was going, but he went. He didn't know what, where he was going. God said, it's a land where I will show you. He just went. It sounds, that's, no, that's no big deal. Well, that sounds like a whole lot of faith to me to go where you don't even know where you're going. The naysayers. There's a lot of people, you know what, they, they look at the extraordinary things God did and they make them ordinary. Like it's just no big deal. We should be make, seeing how God uses ordinary things to make some extraordinary. The everyday things. But a lot of times we miss that because... We're looking at the negative. We're looking at the, hearing all the naysayers, all the voices in the crowd. They get into your ears and they say all these things. What in the world are you doing? Can you imagine the ones around Abram? Why are you going there? You've already got all this set up. Why are you leaving now? Well, you know what? Those that say that's no big deal, say it's no big deal for Abraham to just leave everything he knew. But yet, for those same ones, someone, there's probably some sitting here today in their mind saying that it's no big deal. But yet, after service today, you'll have trouble deciding where you want to eat lunch. <laughs> and if you got your spouse here with you, I know that's a fact. <laughs> How many times have you sit in the car? Where do you want to eat? I don't care. Wherever you want. Wherever you want. And we sit there, we still can't figure it out. Well, I'm leaving. I'm back out of the driver. Which direction do I need to go? I don't know. Wherever you want to go. <laughs> and then when you name a place, they say, no, I don't want to go there. Yeah, I don't want to go there. <laughs> I, I seen something one time. It says, uh, it says uh, the first place she named, take her there. <laughs> it was more to it. I can't remember it right now. <laughs> but yet we think things how God did extraordinary things. We just make them ordinary. But yet these little teeny things like that, it's just like it's no big deal. You know, whatever God is prompting you to, and I know that he's prompting you to something. You say, well, I don't hear God speak to me anymore. I'm telling you, God is speaking. If you're not listening, I don't know what's going on, but it, it ain't on God's end. It ain't on God's end. Whatever God is prompting you to, whatever dream that you want to see come to pass, everybody has a dream. If you stop dreaming, you, you're going to stop existing. I don't care what your age is. There's something that you have. It may be really small. It may be really big. You say, I got a dream so big, I, I, I don't even tell anybody because I'm scared that it might not come to pass and I'll look foolish. Well, whatever that dream is that you want to see come to pass, whatever God is prompting you to, most likely it's going to take a little, at least a little bit of faith on your part to come to pass. Now, can God do it? Yes, he can. He is God. But 
He wants us to demonstrate at least a little bit of faith. Where is our faith? God did such a great work and he saved us from great things. You know what? All the things. You did not deserve that grace God extended you. You didn't deserve that. All the stuff, maybe you got in your background, maybe some things you were ashamed of, whatever. Or maybe you were a good person. But whatever it is, you didn't deserve it regardless. It was extended to you because he loves you. And that he can. For every ten dreamers, there's only going to be one that's going to make a decision to follow in faith. One. One out of ten. You can have ten believers, and nine are going to sit there. Oh, God, I know, I'm trusting in God, but that's far as it goes. When does it come time for us to make, move forward? There's a time, and I believe that time is now, and I believe God is prompting you. Well, you don't understand, Pastor. I, I, I can't. Well, okay, you've got that figured out, just like I had to figure out. I can't. Right, I had to trust in God. It's called faith. I can't. Right, I can't do it. When I was trusting in my own ability, I know it that I mess that made. I can't. That's the first step. You've recognized that you don't have the ability or the power to whatever it is that you want to see come back. You need God's help. So you that's the first step. That's not the last step. That's the very first step. You realize you can't do it. Without following faith, dreams are just going to stay that way. Dreams. One day. I don't want to sit around at the end of my day and say, you know, I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. I don't want to deal with all that regret. I'm going to try it. I might not succeed, but I'm going to try it. What's the worst thing that can happen? Somebody's going to talk about me. <laughs> that's the worst problem I'm going to have in my life. Somebody's going to talk about me. I'll take it if that's all it is. What I find is uh, we focus on our failures too much instead of learning from our failures. You know what? You've got to learn from uh, your failures, but you've also got to learn from other people's failures. Because you ain't going to live long enough to make them all yourself. I don't. You can't make every mistake in the history of the world while you're on your. You've got to learn from other people's mistakes as well. Your failures sh should be analyzed, not criticized. We need to look at them, and you know what can I do different? What I, what can I do so this doesn't happen again? Because I definitely don't want to go through this. But what do we do? We go and criticize everything we've ever failed. You're not going to live long enough. You have, we've got to learn from these things to move on. But what do you see? You see the same things I do. I've done it in my life. And you see, it's easier to see it in somebody else's life. They continue to make the same mistakes over and over again. You're like, aren't they ever going to get this? But then I wonder, I look, I look and I wonder, you know, I bet God looks down at me and thinks the same thing. Eddie, isn't he ever going to get this? You know, I'm trying to speak into his life, but he just keeps going, going back to his routine. He likes going back to his plateau where he's comfortable. Isn't he ever going to get this? He is patient and long-suffering, and I thank God for that. We're quick, quick to look at somebody else and wonder what they're doing. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes we have to look at things a little, a little bit different at times to, to realize what God is trying to do. At the end of my life, I don't want to just be out there and say, I got a few less failures than the person next to me, but then I got all, the, all this mountain of regret to deal with. God, I, I, I think I could have did that. I really look back now, I think I could have did that. Why didn't you? What was holding you back? It wasn't God. I really believe God was prompting us to more than we'll ever become in this life. When you venture out, expect difficulties. If you think it's going to be easy, as soon as, as soon as something difficult comes your way and you draw back, you're never going to be whoever God has expected you to be. There's four things I jotted down to expect. Uh, four things to remember when stepping out. First one is, during difficulties, don't abandon your dreams. God is still God. During the good times, during the bad times, during the smooth times, during the difficult times, God is still God. He hasn't changed and he never will. God is still God. Amen. The second thing is, remember what God can do. Have you, haven't you seen the hand of God move, move in your life? Haven't you seen God do things before? Remember what God can do. You're relying on your own abilities too much. Remember what God can do. Third thing, face facts with faith. 
Be realistic about it. I, I like looking at things in a realistic way, but I apply my faith to those things because I know my faith is in God and He is bigger than anything that I am facing. And the fourth thing is, rely on what God has said. Not what I say, not what anybody else says. Rely on what God has. What does God's Word say about what you're going through? I'm telling you, when we rely on His Word instead of all the things that we listen to, when we're at work, we get all these people in our ears. I'm just telling you, rely on what God has said. We become discouraged when we listen to all these things. We can look at some of the people in the Bible, great people of faith that did mighty things for God. And you can see where they become discouraged at times. All because they've listened to all the voices in the crowd. I'm telling you, keep moving forward. Sometimes we look at things and say, nothing is happening here. It's time, it's, it's time for some, something else to happen. Nothing's happening here. You know what? Let God speak into your life. Whatever that is. Now, we were talking about Abram, which would be Abraham later on. If you were to look at the life of Abram, Remember God promised him a son, and it came to pass. But do you know how long there was, it? There was a gap between that? God didn't promise him a son, and within a year he had a son. Woo! All right, God. That's not the way it went. It was like ten years had passed. If you were to read into the scripture in his life, Abram, one of the, he went out and followed God, didn't even know where he was going, did great things for God. But after 10 years, if you would read in and in his words, he doesn't come out and say it. But you can see the doubt sometimes in his words. God, I know you promised me, but like, I'm going to paraphrase here. Like, where's my son? I've been waiting 10 years. God, I know what you said. I know what you promised, but it ain't starting to come to pass. Have you forgotten me, God? You see, doubt will creep into the best of us. You see, it tells me that a life of faith doesn't mean the absence of doubt. Doubt's going to come along. Doubt and questions are a part of who we are. We're going to doubt things. We're going to have questions. But my doubt has to be stronger. Or I should say my faith has got to be stronger than my doubt. Your doubt's going to leave you running for cover. Your, help, your faith uh, helps you realize you are covered. You know, it's easy in our society today to rely on all the information that's at our fingertips. You know, there's so much, you just go online. You want to know something, you just go online, Google it. Look it up, whatever, and you got the answer within a few minutes. Our culture is driven by information and knowledge. We love to get answers. But it don't work that way in faith. If I already know the answer, that's not faith. If I already know what's going to happen, that's not stepping out in faith. If I know this action is going to produce this result, that don't take any faith. It doesn't mean you're not going to do it, but that doesn't take any faith. The more spiritually mature that you are, the less you're going to need to know in advance. You see, the more you move along, the more you're going to trust God. You're not going to know all the answers up front. And I know that disturbs some of us. Some of us here are very, you know what, i got to know the answers. We're very controlling and think, i got to know up front. i already got to know the answers before I move forward. i got to know now. <laughs> yeah, I've been there too. Don't feel too bad. I've been there. I'd like to know things too when it happens. But I'm telling you, the more you move along in your faith, the less you're going to have to know. And when God tells you, you just respond. Abram, he just went, you know what, I don't know where I'm going, but I know God has told me to do this, and I'm going to move forward with it. I don't know where you're at in your spiritual life. I, I have no idea. I don't go home with you. But I know as, as the more spiritually mature you come, the less you've got to know up front. We don't control nearly as much as we think we do in this life. Can any of us count the stars? <coughs> Certainly not. I was outside 4 o'clock this morning. I, didn't, I don't get up 4 o'clock. Don't, don't think that. There was, there was a problem outside. Uh, some of my, I have some stray cats that come up to my house, and something was going on outside, so I went outside. And it was really still this morning. 4 o'clock, I looked up, and, and I just seen all the stars. There was no clouds, and it made me think of that. Who can count the stars? Does any of us know the number of the stars? No. No, we don't. But I know who does. 
I know who created them. He knows the exact number. Scripture even says he knows the numbers on our head. Or even the lack there of it. He knows, he, he knows everything about us. You know, God, he took the time to create the universe. He created all these things. He created us. But sometimes we don't even trust him. We want to be in heaven with him one day for eternity. But yet, we don't even trust him enough to apply our faith to our, in our lives and, he's, and the things that he's asking us to do. You see, when you got saved, if you're born again, you came into a covenant agreement with the Creator. Not with whoever led you to the Lord. Not any of that. You didn't come into no agreement with them. You come into the agreement with the Creator. Something that really impressed upon me is, you know what, I don't know where you're at in your walk, but God wants you to know the deal is still on. When you got saved and, and you came into that covenant agreement, the deal is still on. He never forgot about it. You may have walked away from him. You might have had a lot of problems in your life going on right now. You might have had a lot of doubts and a lot of questions, but he wants you to know the deal is still on. Amen. He, he never walked away from it. The deal is still on. He is more than willing to hold up his end of the deal. Are you? I don't know where you're mm -hmm. at with that. I don't know where you're at in your life. But the next time you feel okay, remember that dreams go to die on the okay plateau when you go out there. We must stop expecting out of people what only God can give. Sometimes we put our hopes and expectations in the wrong place in this life. But I know God, is, he, he, He's still working things out. I don't always understand it, and I don't always see it, because I look at this world, and I'm like, God, I know you've got a plan, but I'm just not seeing it right now. I don't know what's happening, but God, I know you're working things out. Lord, I just want to trust you more. And that is a hard 